Welcome to the line. New Mexico's capital city chose a new mayor and elected city councilors by ranked choice voting. Used for the first time since Santa Fe voters approved this election process 10 years ago. Businessman Alan Weber won the mayor's race after four rounds of instant runoff with a final tally of 66% of the vote. Joining me to talk about this election and other topics of the week are Tom Garrity of the Garrity Group PR. Former House Minority Whip Daniel Foley is here. Attorney Sophie Martin is with us tonight. And Inez Russell Gomez, she's editorial editor for the Santa Fe New Mexican. Inez, we've been covering Santa Fe's ranked choice voting here at the line table for a number of weeks and months now. Interesting how this all played out. We've got a number of layers to kind of go through. Let's start at the top with the, the mayoral ticket. What was the key for Alan Weber? We'll talk about the ranked choice in a quick sec, but was there something in particular that made this man uh, ring with voters there? Because it, it, when you look at it, he could have won. He had a plurality after the first round of the runoff. Clearly, the Santa Fe voters wanted this guy. What was it for him? I think that people knew him from when he ran for governor in the Democratic primary. Right. Santa Fe uh, went for him pretty heavily at that time. Uh. Uh, he was very active in town. If you, you would go to something, there would be Alan Weber and his wife, Frances. Um, so they were, you know, good citizens. Mm -hmm. So I think in Santa Fe, it's a very personal election. You have to go ask for people's vote. It's not about advertisements or even mailers. Mm -hmm. And he knocked door to door, you know, all over town. And he went and listened to people. It's just the basic old fashioned um, mm -hmm. campaigning. And then he also had a lot of money. Right. to get his message out. He right. by far broke the records and how much money had been raised for mayoral campaign mm -hmm. and he spent it. 300,000 plus, that's a ton of money in a city that size compared to the folks using public financing at 60,000. Right. We've had that problem here in Albuquerque. We can get to that a little bit later too. Another question for you before I get to the other guys since you're uh, in Santa Fe. The idea of ranked choice voting, it seemed to go fairly smoothly until the counting came mm -hmm. and we were all kind of hung out there till about midnight. But in general terms, are folks generally okay with how this all went down? I think people think it went smoothly yeah. uh, in terms of voting. You got to the polls. I took my son to vote. Uh, I had voted early and it was going well. They had people to answer questions. There weren't lines, even though it was 38% uh, turnout, which for a municipal election is good. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if afterward people think it's worth it. And that's going to be an interesting discussion for people to have. Um, the biggest difference we saw was in the campaign because it was much more pleasant than usual because you right. don't want to offend anybody else's opponents. Right. And while that is a plus, after a while it gets really not just boring, but you're not getting all the information you might get about people's records and their experiences. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a lot of debate about whether this is better than the other way yeah. and whether people want to keep it because it was put there with a charter amendment. It could be taken out. That's right. That's right. Daniel, a good point was just made there, and I've heard that from some other folks too, that unless you can highlight someone else's weaknesses, so to speak, or what we come to consider negative campaigning, you can't really you know, know much about a candidate if it's just going to be all nice so to speak. Would you, would you agree with that or do you f in fact find this a better way to go for the, for the voter? Why no, do we I, I mean I stuff? think, you know, so I think there's a difference between negative campaigning and issue campaigning. Right? Okay. If I run out there and say don't vote for Gene, he's a bad guy, yeah. don't vote for Gene, he's an idiot, that's, to me that's negative campaigning. If Gene says, hey listen, I'm going to run as the get tough on DWI guy and I say, he's had three DWIs. Right. I mean, to me people would call that negative campaigning. I, I think that's issue campaigning. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, I, I think that Obviously, this was a new way for the election to be run. There's a lot of excitement about it. Uh, I would say that, you know, it's funny. We, we've talked about this here many times, mm -hmm. all of us have, about the so-called negative campaigning. And people are like, you know, I mean, we, we, we look back, we think back still, one of the highest special elections ever in the history of New Mexico was Heather Wilson and, and uh, Maloof. That's right. Phil uh, Maloof. Phil yeah. Maloof. Yeah. And you probably couldn't get any more negative than that race was. That's yeah, pretty negative. And so, you know, I, I've always said, you know, that negative campaigning is, is sort of like pornography. You know, you ask a group of people who owns pornography, everybody's like, well, I, I ain't got it. Well, some guy's got a billion dollars worth of that stuff in his closet. That's right. So, you know, we get bigger turnouts for... Not where I thought that was going. We, <laughs> we, get, we get a lot of, you know, we get a bigger turnout when this happens. I think that um, it'll be interesting to see if Santa Fe keeps it. It'll be right. interesting to see if it catches on anywhere else. Right. Um, is it personality driven? I mean, different set of personalities could make for a very different. Yeah, I mean, you know, you Santa Fe has always been the right. city different. Santa Fe always kind of pushes the envelope sure. of trying new things. I could tell you right now, if that would have been rolled out in Rio Rancho and they took as long as they did there, there would have been anarchy in the streets of Rio Rancho. I mean, the people there would not have been like, hey, this is really cool, let's see how it's going. So, I mean, yeah. I, I, it may be good for some places. I'm sure that in a place like Cloudcroft, 
you know, where the mayor's going to be elected by 900 people total. Right. Right. You know, things like that may actually work. You get more people involved, but I don't think go. it's going to buy, fly in the big cities. You know, Sophie, interestingly, um, we were kind of joking beforehand, the rich seem to get richer. Alan Weber is now going to command a $110,000 salary, but even more than that, and a pension. Do you think that's why he ran? I don't, I don't think, think so, so either. Yeah. But what would be interesting if he turned down that salary? That would be interesting to me. Now, the other part of it is the power he is going to accrue. The ability to hire and fire the city manager, city attorney, and city clerk. That, that's interesting. That's another personality-driven deal, it seems to me. That could well, either work very well or become a sure, real mess. Sure, I mean, it's a shift in the mm -hmm. philosophy, the, the sort of municipal philosophy for Santa Fe. Right. Um, certainly, it's closer to what we see in, in, not all, but a number of larger cities. Right. And it's something that Santa Fe has been moving toward for some time. I mean, it just happens to be Alan Weber, who's won this time, mm -hmm. um, who, who is somebody who has worked as a management consultant. So it'll be easy, interesting, not easy, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and I, if I may just go back Please. to the, the ranked choice voting thing, I think, mm -hmm. I think one thing they're going to have to look at there is, um, is it more efficient? Is it less expensive? Does the city actually save significant money by not having to run runoffs on right. separate dates? Right. Um, that has to be part of the calculation sure. there. And, and certainly that was part of the thinking in the campaigning to begin with. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. You know, uh, when I think about how this all worked out for Mr. Weber, again, these things are personality driven. You got 300,000 plus in money. It's a big stretch, 197,000 or something more than your next, mm -hmm. you know, uh, opponent raising money on their own. You know, does, what does that do to tip the scale somehow? In, in a place like Santa Fe, does that mean something? Because I was saying to Sarah Gustavus, our producer earlier, where could you possibly spend $300,000? In a market like Santa Fe, there's only so many newspapers and tell rent. And, you know what I mean? It's yeah. So, yeah. so what does that actually walk, do? Walk. You know, yeah. it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's the ground game. Uh, you know, it's uh, additional advertising, social media placements. Right. Uh, you know, kind of ex you, you, there are a lot of different ways you could spend that money, and I'm sure there are a lot of campaign, you know, managers That's who would right. say, "Oh, I would love to spend that." I'll for take you. a third of that. Thank you, Absolutely. to manage it for you. That's right. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know what, what I think? You know, Santa Fe is at a crossroads clearly, but you know, I'm glad to see that it went to the fourth round, uh, right. even though it was like what 12:30 in the morning yeah. uh, before everything was resolved. It was still kind of fun to watch, as long as I could stay awake to see the different tiers, mm -hmm. yes. and then wake up in the morning and go, "Oh yeah, well they now have a new mayor," That's and right. uh, so that was that was kind of fun. It was mm -hmm. glad I was glad that there were no uh, issues with the uh, with the balloting because I think that that could have spelled right. the demise. Right. Uh, and I, I like it because it also had a different type of strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for going for that, you know, down ballot vote, for lack of a better right. term, is right. really, it's, it throws a whole new twist in it. So, mm -hmm. you know, will it survive? I don't know. I mean, it was it was definitely a new twist, and I'm yeah. glad that, uh, that it worked. And it, clearly the person, as you mentioned earlier about the plurality, uh, you know, Mayor Weber was the one who, That's you know, right. kind of won in the long term. Now they have their work cut out for them in a big way in a council meeting coming up within the next 24 hours. That's exactly right. Staying with you for a second, Tom, I remember uh, sitting at the table, you were over here last time, we talked about the idea, it was all such a mystery beforehand. We really didn't know how this was all going to go down. Mm -hmm. In the, it was a Vote Santa Fe, the group that had put out the, the cute little cartoon with the uh, you know, animals and how to vote and going to beer places and teaching people how to rank stuff. And you and I talked about this, that, you know, it, if, if it comes down, if it works, that's a big win for them on the PR side of it. Do you, do you know what oh, I mean? Absolutely. Like they did that well, it seems to me. Yeah, they did. In fact, I spoke to uh, uh, so the person who ran their public relations effort uh, yesterday right? Uh, and uh, saw them at a reception. And, you know, I said, how did it go? And uh, she said, well, it was phenomenally good. And we hope that we get to do it again. Uh, so, you know, I mean, they, they feel really good yeah. about the uh, PR effort to go out and educate everyone. Right. Um, you know, it, it worked, and so that's a good thing. Right. Let's finish up with you, Inez, since you're up there in Santa Fe. Interesting, when you look at the landscape, I would say all of the candidates were a bit to a little bit more left of center, but Alan Weber was much more left of center. And we've got some new city council members now, too, so the makeup's a little bit different. You had some seasoned city council folks who are not on council anymore now. And so the changes are much more than the mayor. It's a whole new dynamic going on up there. Any predictions from your point of view? Well, it's going to be interesting um, because one of the new counselors is Carol Romero Worth, who mm -hmm. won with 52.9% of the vote against two other candidates, so she didn't even go to extra runoffs. Right. She's married to Peter Worth, who's the Senate Majority Leader. That's just an interesting little twist. Sure. Um, 
Roman Tigrabeta didn't have an opponent, and he was the only person running for council who actually endorsed the mayor's race, right. and he was fortunate to have endorsed the winner. Right. So that should make some That's nice a alliance. Good call. Right. It is, it is. <laughs> but he brings interesting experience because he was a Santa Fe County manager. Ah. Uh, then we have Signe Lindell was reelected, and then Joanne V. L. Coppler uh, came from my district, and she mm. won in two rounds against mm -hmm. two men. And what's interesting about her, she's been a human resources uh, personnel person, even for the city of Santa Fe under Mayor Pick 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So she has a lot of interesting experience. So you've got people from different walks of life. You've got some business people, some private sector people, whereas before we had more government employees. And you've got people with different uh, issues. Right. So I think you're going to have a nice mix and you're going to have a uh, half female council, whatever that does. Sure. You know, sure. so that's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. It's going to be. Is there any one fun. issue that's jumping out? Because I, I see housing coming up a lot. Yep. That came out of a lot of the city council member, uh, voices as well. Right. Mm -hmm. There's housing. There's what to do with the College of Santa Fe, University of Santa Fe, Art and Design. The bigger issues, I think, are structural because they have to fix the city, city finances system. Gotcha. We're not in deficit like Albuquerque, but we have to figure out what to do with how we spend our money, how we control it. Mm -hmm. And there's also just worry about basic services like getting enough cops, cutting the weeds, making sure parks are nice, streets. I think getting back to those basics is something that people want while at the same time they want some bells and whistles. So they right. have to balance all of that. Some vision, vision for the future, all that kind of a thing. Right. Yeah. But get my garbage. Yeah, that's right. Yes. That's all comes down to stuff like that. I'll have to hold it there. Now, when we come back to the line, we'll talk about the Albuquerque City Council's vote for a tax increase.